Welcome back to the second episode of Quantum X, where again, we'll be looking at the Uniblock. Only this time, we have some finished samples, so you'll be able to see it, not just in 3D models, but also in action. Quantum X. We're joined by Mitya Beshta again, the lead designer on this project. And Mitya, run us through the spec. Uh, what hardware have we got for the build? So we have a Z690 X3 motherboard here, 3090 uh, Strix graphics card here, 64 gigs of DDR5 RAM, four sticks of one terabyte memory, some really short riser cable, but we're gonna talk about that in the future, and some 12900K CPU from Intel. The rest of the parts here are meant for our Uniblock. Okay, so I can see already that there are two absolutely massive halves to this, both much bigger than a normal block. So which fits where and what's on which piece? So what we see here is the lower half of the uni block and the top half. The top half is uh, consisted of the, we would say, the reservoir part with a DC pump with its own heatsink, the active backplate coil plate and the memory coil plate. Okay, so let's take a look. All right, I see now the DDC and the fact that it extends to this whole heatsink, which was the EK logo on the other side, and a pretty standard looking cold plate. And this is the back plate? This is the active back plate. Obviously. Okay. Yeah. So we see here the two pushins that are used for the for connecting to the lower half of the uniblock. We start the channel in the VRMs, goes around it, covers the PCI5 uh, M.2 drive and goes underneath Underneath here are the bottom M.2 drives, together with uh, actual block for the GPU, which uses the same engine as the Vector 2. Um, then the coolant flows right through the above the chipset and out of the uni block. And then radiators and uh, for the inlet, it goes straight back up, firstly into the CPU, which uses the exact engine as the Velocity 2 does. For it, we also use the exact mount, so the pressure will be evenly, evenly distributed, and that is it. Okay, so this, this extra piece here, presumably this is for M2s, is this first or, or last? This is actually one of the first parts that you're gonna want to install on the motherboard. As we see here, uh, this is used um, for the lower M.2 drives, as the M.2 drives are kind of flipped on the motherboard. Additional passive cooling is not such a bad idea here. Uh, for the RAMs, we would want to use these heat sinks, specially made for this project. Um, we kind of want to strip the stock heat sink from it and uh, use the these ones. Okay, so uh, talk us through that. We've, we've, we've seen what everything does, everything that's actively cooled, and it's, it's practically everything. It's practically uh, everything. All the things, so... Uh, on the subject of all the things, there must be some RGB lighting in here as well. That is true. We did use one uh, dance strip right on the left side here that evenly distributes lighting onto the upper half of the unit block. So we still have RGB here. Nice. So uh, when it comes to putting these things together, we've seen the M2 cold plate is already mounted on the board. Presumably that means the M2s are next and and then what comes after? Uh, after that part, we can easily uh, mount in the CPU, place the thermal pads across the VRMs, uh, insert the memory with the heat sinks into it, um, insert the M.2 drives. Okay, and, and presumably then it's time for a, a piece of block? Yeah, then it's time for the lower block. Carefully put it on there, screw it with the first set of screws for the GPU. For that one, we would want to use the bottom as the heads first, I would say, like this. Okay, so this is not like you would usually see in a, in a vertical GPU build, but this is actually upside down with the back plate facing, or the back side facing toward the, that is correct. Toward that the is, side of the case. That is why we also needed this riser cable, which we would want to um, insert right after we uh, put in the first half of the uniblock on. Okay, and then time for the last piece? Then it's time for the last piece, yeah. 
using these two pushing fittings right here, carefully place them on there. Uh, of course, previously installed thermal pads on the GPU, on the back side of the, of the GPU. Correctly placed uh, mounting screws for the active back plate, and then you're all set for placing the upper half on it. And and that all together, we will have everything on the table in one complete assembly. The entire build's done. All you need is a radiator, a couple of radiators, and a couple of fans, and a case. Sounds even easier than distribution plates. So on the subject of case, what are we going to be using? We're going to be using the Atlas II from Yulebeast, especially made for the EK in this case. So let's get to building. Very nice, let's do it. Okay, so welcome back. As you can see, everything's assembled. All the hardware is inside. The unit block came together. Pretty nice. It looks smooth on camera, but how did it really go, Matya? Yeah, as this is the first prototype of the unit block, uh, it didn't go without a few smaller kinks, but nothing that could fatally uh, ruin our unit block. So, a few minor adjustments, and we're good to go. Yeah, the just final version. Just some thermal pads there, I think, that uh, we need some, some height corrections. And yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. Uh, and in terms of the look, now, now we can see it together. So uh, it, it's not completely in line with the latest generation of Quantum products. Of course, this is Quantum X. Uh, so can you explain what we were going for aesthetically? So with this Uniblock, we kind of went for the old rustic style, uh, rustic EK style, I would say, uh, kind of look with the Ch channels and inner radiuses of them uh, are really resembling the old DK blocks, as some of you may remember. Uh, we have a really nice heat sink over here, some really nice LED cover here, and you know, pretty much old style black screws and black o rings. Yep, it's, it's great to see the EK logo outside of a circle again for such a long time and a really elegant combination with the heat sink. Uh, so so overall, it's it's definitely not the smallest block I've ever seen, uh, but clearly it, it's in the interest of making the system flatter. Uh, as we see, it's it's a pretty big motherboard. So was was the rationale to make it small? Uh, we were kind of ho aiming for that small form factor build, but uh, along the way we decided to go for the full ATX motherboard, uh, full. Uh, full cover uh, PCB of the GPU and uh, along the way we just made the whole block flat and uh, all we have to do now is to plug in the radiators. Nice and it's going to look great when the coolant's in there too. I can see I have a lot of work with the cables but let's get it all together.
So the build is done. Uh, Joe, how did the cables go? Pretty nice, not without a few burnt fingers, but overall the result was worth it and we ended up with a really deep red that complements the coolant. The case also really nicely sets off the uniblock and we actually kind of swapped the legs around so the board sits further out towards the front and we have lots of space in the back for tubing and cables. So the tubing did go a little differently to as we first planned it. Uh, we actually used Torque Micro 90s along the side of the board down here and they helped us just line up the tubing through the original cable holes that were in the case and it looks like it was meant to be there. On our final episode of this Quantum X Uniblock project, we're going to be discussing the performance tests uh, and how you can get your hands on the Uniblock itself. And see you next time. Thanks for joining me and Mitya and we'll be back soon. Quantum X.